Ranch, I wanted to kind of share this with you guys because when I come outside in the mornings and afternoons, these are the church bells that play and I'm pretty sure that you can hear them in the distance. The church is only two streets over so it's actually fairly loud in person. Like it, it almost hurts your ears, it's so loud. I can't imagine living right next door to the church <laughs> with how loud the bells are. They're beautiful and the only downside is like sometimes, I guess because the recordings are old and the speakers are old, all the equipment used to play them, it gets kind of scratchy with time. They definitely don't sound the way they did when I was a kid growing up and going to that church. So I'm like, mm, I don't know, church bells. <laughs> Not as pretty as you once were, but it's still kind of nice. Like you get to come out and you hear the bells ring and see uh, like that wasp pollinating and everything hanging out around the berry plants. It's really pretty. Um, I originally came out here because I kind of wanted to show you how I just planted some heavy hitter okra, but there's just so much, so much to show now. Like I want to turn over here because, um, next to our slab, we have all of these banana plants and these are the ones that almost made it to fruiting age. But then that horrible freeze came this winter well ahead of time and just knocked everything out out of nowhere it was completely unpredictable and we didn't know it it didn't say anything in the weather so that was a big surprise so you can see how they just all pop back up and now this will be the third year that we've had banana plants and the type of bananas that we're growing take 18 months to 24 months to produce banana plants so talking about two years of wait time and when they're entering into the season where they'll be producing fruit, a freeze comes and kills everything. So we want to kind of get a structure up that's permanent where they can be moved and protected in something that's not going to be like um, an eyesore to people in the front passing through. That way, whenever we hit our coldest months, they will be well protected because my oldest son planted just three banana plants and from this all of this grove started popping up and so it's really important to kind of harvest that interest um and continue to grow it you know he loves this why not continue to make it magical for him and actually there used to be a time just a few years ago when I was a kid where we could grow banana plants here without really needing protection frosts were less common um, we still got them, don't get me wrong, but we didn't have the freezes like we did. We could just mulch down while they would be fine. It seems like snows and frosts, and by snows I mean sad icy slushies, are becoming more common. You know, I can count on like two fingers the amount of like, oh look, a little snowflakes. And we had to look in the car windows to really see them land when I was a kid. And... And for my children, you know, it's like every other year, every two years, there's, you know, something that looks like snow landing on the ground, some kind of ice. And it's so strange how the weather is changing. Um, but I think if people, if you follow global warming, just know that it's not just global warming during, I think it's something like they're predicting like, hotter summers yes but colder winters whatever it's all a mess all i'm saying is we're definitely getting colder winters and i don't appreciate it texas you know because i don't but everything's kind of a mess over here this is where the birds were free kind of ranging in and it's just a big area we're not doing anything in um i actually think that we're going to go ahead and this whole area make it like a huge seating area because we have a fairly large family our family's just going to continue to grow i mean my son turns 12 tomorrow guys i'm so excited um he said he's staying up until 12 because he's turning 12. so i thought that was really cute that he brought that up so i mean we have six years until he is a legal adult and uh our family is just gonna grow before we know it you know he'll be 20 before i hit 40 so that's kind of crazy to think you know but i'm really excited and so 
you know, with them getting older, they have friends. I have siblings that are my kids' age. So we need like a large seating area for us just to sit out in the garden. And originally we talked about making this a, an extension of the shop and rocking it in, but we really are thinking a good place to sit and just gather would be so great. And eventually we do want to move out of the city into um, a larger property the kids health reasons especially our daughters really plays a large part in why we haven't and so we're just going to develop as much as we can in the city and show you guys every step of the way so that you can also kind of learn for yourself because why not you know why not if we're already here why not do what we can to our maximum potential make our mistakes now and show everyone else that's in the city hey you can do this i think it's a lot of a lot of fun and it's really interesting and look all these blackberries look how much our grapevine is taken off i can't believe how many leaves it has all of a sudden and so this this plant is at least four to five years old we're really hoping that we'll get grapes this year um I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Some grapevines don't produce for seven years. That's a long time to wait. So I'm hoping that we get to see some grapes. It'd be really cool. And plus, grapevines produce a lot more fruit than you may expect, especially muscadine. So this would just be a really cool grape and probably last a lot longer in storage and be easier to preserve than store-bought grapes. So that's definitely something to look into. And this is just one of three grapevines. We planted this in two others that were planted in our very front yard. So if they all produce this year, that would actually be like a huge number of grapes for us. And this grapevine is all the way, guys, it's all the way over here. Look at this. That's insane. Like that, it's huge. You know, I have 20 feet of fencing and it's down all but eight feet of it so i'm excited just to see how much how big it grows i guess how much fencing it takes over and all of these are turning um they're turning red look at that this is huge this berry compared to my thumb like that's insane i told you guys these berries produce more and more every year and they get bigger so I know I'm zooming in and out a lot. I'm sorry for that. I know it kind of makes some people feel a little queasy and weird. So this is what I'm saying. Like, look at these pink flowers right here. And then the same plant, white flowers. They just produce them both. So that's cool. But it makes it harder to predict when you're going to get pink flowers. Which I'm still excited about. Because I love both of the color varieties. This one too. This one back here is producing pink flowers now. And white flowers all in the same plant. And oh look, it's our first blackberry of the season. <laughs> Sam's going to come out and eat these because he's the one who begged for blackberry plants and we found this thornless variety. So that's kind of how that happened. Um, it's the thing that he loves. Charlie, I think it's watermelon. Sam is blackberries, Larry's bananas, and the baby could care less. She likes all plants and she just wants to take them out of their pots and expose their roots. And all along here, you can see baby cucumbers are popping up. So like, I don't know what that is, but in front of it's a baby cucumber and more baby cucumbers kind of all the way down. That's pretty awesome. Look, one of them managed to get outside of the fencing. <laughs> So, there's just everything. So, I thought this fig plant had died. I did. I really thought it was dead. And look at this at the very bottom. It is actually coming up again. So, that's amazing that it, it grew. And I don't know if this fig is grafted. But if so, then whatever's below the graft is coming up. But it also looks like a fig plant. So, this fig was not one I planted. It was one that came from a friend of ours. Um, one of my husband's co-workers so I don't even know what the fruit look like or anything what type of fig it is just kind of one of those things that I guess I'll find out when you guys find out and look at all these these are more cucumbers these are the salt and pepper cucumbers that I planted from Johnny Seeds 
and I guess the rain kind of shifted them around because they're definitely not where I planted them but they are coming up pretty well everywhere in the soil and I think that we may actually going to get cucumbers fairly early this year we were kind of in that weird like the first few times that I tried growing cucumbers they grew um but it got hot really fast and they got really bitter and it was just gross we couldn't eat them we had to feed them at the time we had chickens so we're feeding them to our chickens look at this isn't this pretty it was a dollar at, at the dollar general by our house so who can say no to that and um we last year we were able to grow those dark cucumbers they were really well and so i thought i'd plant the dark cucumbers here but then all of those salt and pepper cucumbers came in and I really wanted to try them. I ended up getting an entire pack of like a hundred seeds or something, a hundred and something seeds for $3 and some change because they had some overstock. Um, I think it was like that. Maybe it was 75. It was a lot of seeds. Okay. Regardless, we don't really need 75 cucumber plants or a hundred or anything. So if these produce as well as we think they will, and then we'll start putting cucumbers in other areas of the yard and garden, then I expect to have a huge amount of cucumbers this year, which is great because my kids are obsessed with pickles and my father also asked if we could can some cucumbers. So I know there are a lot of people that want them and I think that's really exciting. Our squash plants. Oh, this one, I didn't even pollinate this one. Look, it pollinated all by itself, a baby squash plant. So these haven't really produced any squash, look at this, yet this year. So that's really exciting that they have squash on them now. That one's pollinated, this one's not. Look how big this one is. And the flower hasn't even opened yet. Now, these squash are called, um, here in Southeast Texas, like our grocery stores call them like green cozel squash, but that's not really what they are because, or no, they are green cozel squash, I think is the actual type of zucchini that they are, but they're called green calabasa in our grocery stores, like H-E-B and different stores, especially if it's a Spanish store. And so, that like the meat markets and things of that nature and I didn't realize until I posted it that there are some regional differences because Cala um calabasa is actually Spanish for squash and it refers to like pumpkin any type of pumpkin it means pumpkin and it's any type of pumpkin but depending where you are regionally it can mean different things and there's also an heirloom squash called calabasa that's like a pumpkin, but strangely shaped. It's definitely a winter squash variety. So I think that that gets confusing, you know, as to what it is. But if I was to say like, oh, I have a calabasa growing in my garden here, people that are local to me around me also know that I'm talking about this gray striped zucchini plant. Whereas people who aren't from this part of Texas would be really confused and I didn't realize just you know all those regional differences it's like how here we say cilantro and we're referring to the plant in general um, and then coriander is the seed but in some regions they don't say cilantro they say coriander when referring to the entire plant not just the seed so they're like when you start gardening you have to learn like all the regional differences from different people that are watching your channel and learning from you and also that you're learning from so you understand what they're talking about because like for me it's squash for some people it's courgette and then that always confused me because for me courgette was just like a little squash with the flower still attached but for some people that's like an actual harvestable squash so I'm just learning all the different terms is so crazy and so interesting. I, who would have thought <laughs> the most interesting part of gardening would be all the different names that people call them. Okay, I can't get over how big these plants are. They are huge. Like these are the squash that I've been showing. It has been pretty warm the last few days, but also it's been kind of rainy. Like it's very cloudy today, 
we'll have scattered storms throughout the day and then tonight it's supposed to have like some pretty severe thunderstorms but you can see like just how massive these plants are um, if you go back just to a couple weeks ago on how very small they were so that's why I kind of spaced them out more you know because I knew that they would get this big and these are not done growing these are going to get way bigger and I see more squash kind of growing down here so now you guys see like I know people some people think I'm crazy you know eating the squash flowers on these but stuffing them with like cream cheese sausage mix like some people do with jalapenos it's so good especially if you use spicy sausage and it just seems like a waste of food to not try and eat it you know and then fry these up with like cream cheese and some jalapeno breakfast sausage stuffed inside of it it's you know batter them up fry them I mean you know that's good and I can't really come out here and grow like cattle on my land. In fact, I can have just about anything with my kids being 4-H. But Animal Control specifically told me a story about someone raising a cow in their backyard, which is smaller than my yard. I have one of the bigger lots in this neighborhood. And I about died laughing because, you know, like, there are people legitimately trying to raise cattle in their backyard when their whole entire yard, house, and everything are less than half an acre. So I'm like, wow, that's that's wild to me, you know? I wouldn't try that. <laughs> I'm not saying maybe you could. Um, they're a smaller breed of cattle, but we're talking about a very large breed of Angus cattle. That They were had an Angus cow in their backyard. And I'm like, you know, that's wild. <laughs> So because of that story, I knew for a fact that we cannot have cattle in the city. Well, we can if we have a certain amount of acreage, which I don't have, you know. And quite frankly, I couldn't afford that here. I think this this squash is a different type than the other ones. You can see it looks different. I think this is a yellow squash variety, um, which I did plant. And also I planted some, what I, I don't know exactly how to say it, zephyr squash, which are... Um, I think they're yellow and gr with a green at the very end, but don't quote me. They could be green with yellow, but I'm pretty sure they're yellow with green at the end. This is my first year growing them, and I bought them because they were a very highly productive variety. And most of those are the ones that I kind of messed up, and I planted over here in this row. And they're not looking so great. You know, they're very small because I didn't separate them out and let them have more time under the grow light like I did the rest of these. And if you can see the difference between those tiny squash right there and these big old squash plants, I can definitely say, you know, separating, the, separating them out, like put them in your two and a half inch pot and let them germinate. And then once they get their first true leaf, separate them out into individual like four and a half to five inch pots and let them grow until they fill that up and then plant them out because trust me it made a huge difference in growth between these beauties and those should be beauties i'm hoping that they'll recover but if they don't here's what i did and this is what i wanted to tell you guys um but i just got distracted by all the cool things happening in my yard and that was because I knew there was a chance that these may not make it. They are small. These had frost damage. Um, which is crazy because our last frost date, frost date is March 2nd. So that was like wild that we had a frost and it didn't even show up in the weather that it was going across. But what I did, and I wanted to plant some burgundy okra, but I'll show you. These are the heavy hitter okra plants. They're an improved version of Clemson Spineless. And all I've ever grown is Clemson Spineless. I'm very aware of all the different okras, orange, pinks, the Hill Country, Squatty, Star of David, everything else. My parents have grown a lot of different okra. Um, when they were going through, they wanted to grow a garden when we were a little younger. I think we we're actually teenagers. Um, but I have never grown it myself, anything but the standard Clemson Spineless. And actually, I have like a lunch bowl, a decent sized lunch bowl, full of probably like 150,000 Clemson Spineless seeds 
that I got just out of a five gallon bucket of Clinton's Vineless that I got too big while I was out of state and I saved all those seeds so we will never have to buy regular Clemson's Vineless ever again and if that's how those produce I'm excited to see how these heavy hitter okra produce and then the other type of okra that I have to plant right now are the burgundy okra just because I wanted something pretty to be real honest and so that's why I picked these I thought they would be fun I also want to try like the pink ones and the orange jeans I orange jean and then there's a pink okinawa but i just don't have you know i don't have space right now i don't know where to put them i don't have any more dirt to buy this and honestly with all the appointments we've had i just don't think we're gonna have the money within the next couple of months to build more hills so because okra like heat so much that may be something that we could grow later on no problem because once it gets hot it's gonna stay hot until like october um, and also, I may be able to plant, just clear off an area in the ground and plant seeds because they can grow in this clay soil because okra has some pretty incredible tap roots. And at the end of the season, I'll pull up a couple okra and show you just how amazing their tap roots are. And when grown in an area where it stays warm all year round, just like peppers, they actually become a perennial plant, which is really cool. Um... And squash is the same way. There are people that grow, have been growing the same squash, tomato, plants um, for over a year. And they produce quite a bit. And then the same people have their pepper plants and they're years and years old and they look like trees. So it's just really cool how different things are depending on where you're located. So what I did, and you cannot see them. I just did this yesterday because it was going to rain today. I thought I wouldn't have to water them in is in between each of these plants like right here i planted i just put in a little seed ochre seed right there just kind of pushed it in now i'm not planting them in compost this underneath this is actual topsoil so these hills are actually made of topsoil and then underneath them or on top of the topsoil is compost to give it um Sorry, the mail came right as I was um, doing the video and she had a package to drop off. So I had to kind of walk over there and it took me a minute because I'm actually not wearing shoes right now. And I did, had to walk across the rocks. That's never fun, you know, of a specific way that I come out of my house through the garden where it's all smooth and grass and it feels good under your feet. And uh, it kind of threw me off my game. So I was just saying like, a lot of these squash are pretty far apart and like this one one of the squashes already died it didn't I actually may have pulled it up because it just didn't look good and so in between these plants I planted an okra and the reason for that is that these don't look that great they're not as large as the other squash and while they may catch up they absolutely may catch up with the weather being warm I don't know that they will which is why in some areas there are a couple of them planted because I thought that maybe a couple of them wouldn't make it so and you can kind of see why like this one looks like it'll pull through and these are looking a little rough so I'm just kind of playing it by ear really playing it by sight and seeing what happens and then in the meantime um, letting them kind of germinate the okra germinate and we'll see what happens because if the squash don't take then the okra can grow up in between them and it won't be a loss you know at least something will still be producing food in the garden but even if the squash do take you know um they grow at a different level than the okra does the okra grows up really really high and while it'll shade out the squash some this area of my yard gets a ton of sun during the summer it is absolutely brutal and so they could probably use some shade from the okra and then we always get squash bugs we cannot avoid them i've already seen them in my garden on my turnips of all things and so i know that they're there because i've seen two or three of them just in this area and so once they produce squat or they grow 
if they produce squash and they get annihilated by squash bugs, it's still no great loss because while disappointing, I'll have something else planted in here already and that will be that heavy hitter okra. And I was amazed because when I got the okra, I opened it up. I was like, there are hardly any seeds in here. There are only 15 seeds in the heavy hitter okra packs, but I have it on good, like, I really trust from what I'm seeing, you know, that, um, that's all you need, that these produce an insane amount of okra and 15 seeds is more than enough that realistically, if you only had space for five okra plants, the heavy hitter would be the way to go from, that's what I hear. And look at this. The sunflower is one of the sunflowers that volunteered here. The seeds came from the fodder from my uh, ducks and geese. I give them black oil sunflower seeds and they have sunflower seeds mixed into their food. And so these just, I guess a bird or something or the wind, they just kind of ended up here and grew on their own. So I left them and we'll see what happens. And then here, the lettuce plants, which you guys see quite often and they were getting pretty good size. And these are so silky. I've never, I never realized how soft they were. I've not harvested a single piece of lettuce off of this, these. These are the Cimarron lettuce. And my husband and I were trying to figure out if we should harvest them a little bit or just let them wait until they're close to maturity. Um, and I really don't know. I feel like these might actually, they're pretty thick, but they're also really soft. These might be good leaves either way. Um, as baby greens or as a head of lettuce. So I think this is gonna be one of my new favorite lettuce plants and you can see. Now I have not planted very many lettuce varieties um, other than this one, the rest are just ones that popped up in my garden from last year that reseeded themselves. And the reason is, is just that our weather has been so unpredictable and it can get hot really fast and then it, if it gets cold then yeah the lettuce will be great but too cold it gets damaged so it's just really hard to predict so for me i find like the best time to grow lettuce without cover is during the fall and this is spring and i didn't have cover so i didn't want to and you can see where i planted the watermelons inside of it and it's kind of getting pretty good size and that was planted there because i knew that these lettuce wouldn't last much longer um uh, about the end of May, it'll already be in the high 90s, and so lettuce won't do well. And that's why I wanted to get other plants planted around here to take over when this lettuce is no longer any good. And I think the melons are a good choice because they start off really slow. Like, it takes them a while to get going, and then about the time that it gets so hot, the lettuce starts dying off or bolting, all of a sudden... The watermelon will just be taking over this entire bed and dripping over the sides so i think it was just a good option and you can kind of see how we started uh, mulching it in and then stopped and what happened was that some of these plants were actually still fairly small and it was just getting smushed when we we're trying to lay down the compost so now that say they're getting bigger in certain areas where they're larger we can lay some compost down but still the really smallest of the plants that's not going to work because they'll probably just smush their beautiful little leaves and then here is the potatoes they're still growing um they look like they're actually dying back you know, and I'm not sure if that's just the weather or what. These were the ones that were growing in my compost bin. So I always kind of want to look. <laughs> look at that. Uh, it's part of the fairy garden. I'm not really sure how it ended up there unless maybe one of the kids sat on top and it got hidden. I kind of want to check and see, but I don't know how far down I have to dig to find. I know this is like a big no-no when you have potatoes from what I hear, but you know. I don't even feel, I think you'd have to go pretty far down. Oh, I do feel a potato in there. It actually feels like a pretty good sized potato. I'm going to leave it a little longer, I guess. I don't know. I kind of want to pull it out and show everyone, but I also don't want to damage it. You know, kind of see if they'll grow more tubers. So you can see more foliage coming up off of this, but I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. So I found this um, German variety. It's a yellow potato. 
growing in my compost bin and I couldn't get any potato um, tubers at the time to use for seed potatoes. So I said, well, let me transplant this out of the compost bin and put it in here and see if I can't produce enough tubers um, for me to use for seed later in this year since we have such an incredibly long, I think we have like 220 days of frost free growing season here. I knew that I could at very least replant these in the summer or grow them later in the summer towards fall. So I have time to get potato beds in and if you live in South Texas, you do too. I'm in zone 9A so if you're in 8, 9, 10 or any higher, you're going to be able to grow potatoes still. So no worries there. And look at this, how much is mulched in all that cardboard is laid down as a barrier and then all this is mulched in it makes it so much easier to walk on and get the wheelchair through it's really lovely and then here's more baby squash but i actually am almost certain that there's actually like a squash that's already pollinated somewhere oh yeah look at that that squash is already pollinating the flowers dying back and it's a pretty good sized squash. It's kind of hidden in all the leaves. So there's a lot. It looks like we're actually going to get a pretty decent amount of squash because the plant behind this plant that has the weirdness on its leaves, um, which I'm not too worried about because it's not on the underside of the leaves, this plant produced a squash already. And so this one is starting to. So that means... We're definitely gonna have squash because the other plants have some squash on them. Um, one or two that's been pollinated. So I know without a doubt, we're gonna end up getting some squash before the squash bugs hit. It looks like something happened to pinch off the top of this blackberry plant, but it'll be fine. It won't make a difference. Blackberries aren't like tomatoes. If the tops get pinched off, they're going to just produce and continue to grow upwards. It's not gonna make a big difference because especially this is kind of, it's not an ever varying variety, but it might as well be <laughs> called that because they produce off of last year's and this year's growth. And that means they're going to um, just produce fruit until freeze and then start up again this time of year, next year. So we will get lots and lots of fruit off of these plants if you can tell by the front beds that i've already shown there it's just insane how much fruit is everywhere now these are a little different because i cut them all all the way down like i cut every bit off to the base because one of them had a disease and it looks like it actually was the best thing that i could have done for them because they're coming back even healthier this year and look at these the size of these strawberries they're not bad right Something got to this little one. Quite a bit of strawberries. And you can actually, if you want to, and you have strawberry plants, you can hide your strawberries under the foliage and they'll still turn, just so you know, they will still turn colors. It's a good way to kind of keep the birds off of them. But actually I actually think it's my cat was gnawing on the strawberry plant, so that's an interesting one. And why I'm showing you all this is one that I recently, you know, composted everything. But two is because in all of this, I couldn't plant anything else in it because of this isn't compost yet. Like it's still breaking down, has a lot of wood. It's mixed with a lot of natural wood and it's just not ready to plant something that needs a lot of nitrogen in. These strawberries are actually planted down into the native soil and into the improved soil. And then the compost is kind of around them. That's why they look like they're in bowls because they are. But with the compost being the way it is, and I knew it would suck nitrogen out of a lot of plants, I didn't want to plant anything like squash or those type of things that required that to grow so what I did is I went ahead and planted a couple more um I planted them 18 inches apart so there's more than a couple so of those those um heavy hitter okras all in here so this will also produce okra and I did that because I like I said earlier okra has quite the taproot 
and it will be able to like drill down below all of this compost into the native soil and will be drought resistant, heat resistant, everything else. And so these strawberries will look like they died once it hits 90 degrees. They will die back to the crowns until next year when the cool spring weather starts. They do not do well in heat whatsoever. And so that's why if you're in Texas and you buy strawberry plants and you plant them and then you think that they all died, well, they're just basically going dormant during the hottest months of the year and they'll come back when the weather cools if you mulch in and protect the crowns, is what, which is what we do. So all the okra will take over this bed until next season and then these strawberries will spring back up early next spring. So these just don't produce for that long. Once it gets too hot, that's it. And we got a fairly good amount of strawberries off of these plants, these three plants, and then we have um, 25 more strawberries, Chandler strawberries that were planted this year that will not likely produce fruit this season, but next year they will and they'll produce runners. So that was kind of our way of getting more strawberry plants and larger strawberries and also producing new strawberry plants off of the runners, which are basically like this. They look like this, but instead of having a strawberry at the end, they have a little baby plant. And once that plant grows roots, you can cut it off and it'll be its own plant. And that's a good way to propagate and get more strawberries. So if you don't have a lot of money, but say you could buy even one or two Chandler strawberries, you can have tons of um, new strawberry plants if you learn how to propagate those. And that's true for any strawberry that produces offspring through runners. So I would just say do a Google search of strawberries that grow in your area that produce runners. And you might be surprised. If you live further north than I do, you can grow strawberries. If you live in my area or in zone 10 or 11, they have a strawberry um, on Gurney's website that is specifically for zone 9, 10, 11, extremely hot regions, but I've never grown it. I don't know how it'll flare the winter, but that would be your best option for growing strawberries if you live in my zone or a warmer zone that I'm in. If not, then Chandler strawberries grow here. This is technically supposed to be a zone 8 or lower strawberry, but I'm in zone 9 and this is its second year here and it's doing just fine. Maybe not as well as it will do somewhere else, but I love the strawberry. It's one of our favorite varieties. The first year, the strawberries are very tiny, but they start to get much bigger as the years go on, as you can see. So look at that. These are pretty. You can actually eat them now and they're a little tart, but they're still good, but they are best when they turn completely red. Those are the best best strawberries and they make little cages you can put around your plant to keep them from getting eaten by birds and things like that if that's something you worry about um I think once the okra gets up in here it won't matter because they'll shade it all out so I feel like I've been talking forever it's actually kind of muggy out here for being so shaded today it's relatively warm um, it's supposed to be up into the high 80s before the rain starts, which is wild to me. <laughs> it's not even April. And, you know, I'm sure that's foreign to some of you that live further north, you know, when you still have snow and everything else on the ground. And we're in the high 80s already. I know that's really different. And so, I have a lot of stuff I actually have to do inside today. So that tonight I can kind of focus on my um, schoolwork. This carrot is so tiny. I don't know why these are so much smaller than the other ones. I'm actually going to go give this to my rabbit. Our carrots are not our, our carrots. That's funny. Our rabbits are not allowed to have carrots all of the time because they are really high in sugar content. But we do allow them to have some carrots, you know, over time, and uh, they do appreciate it, you know. So. You can't do it all the time because they're really high in sugar and it's just not good for your bunnies. But a little bit every now and then is perfectly fine. This is much better. That's the kind of carrot I want to see coming from my garden. But these are super tiny. <laughs> so, okay, well, I appreciate you guys all kind of spending time with me. I really wanted to show you more about the okra and everything else. But 
there's just looks like there's a lot to kind of look over in the garden and manage before the storm comes and there's definitely a lot to do inside as far as like baking and cooking and everything else for the week so i'm gonna go ahead and let you go and hopefully it's a big hopefully at some point later this week i can actually look at this I had two carrots <laughs> roots the roots are funny um i can get out here and i can find where i'm going to plant a couple of red burgundy okra seeds and i can go ahead and show you how i plant them and what they look like so i know some of you already know and probably have more experience than me but there are a lot of us just starting out in gardening and raising animals and some of the things that seem so simple to everyone else aren't simple you know like it makes sense once you learn but at first you're like that's crazy and one of those things i'm learning about that's so different is the difference between how chickens feather out and how quickly versus ducks since i'm such a duck person so there will be a video to come on that because <laughs> that's my big learning curve right now is not thinking that chickens are going to grow in the same manner that ducks do yeah, I know that may be an obvious to some of you, but it wasn't to me, guys. So, thank you guys for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.